If you're having a bidding problem with your horse, the number one reason for bidding problem is excessive tissue laying on the bars of the mouth just in front of the first cheek teeth. So the bars of that space between the front incisors and the cheek teeth back here, you know that space where there's no tooth? Or if it's a, a male horse, they could have a canine sticking up in the middle of that. But it's where your bit is placed. And if you stand directly in front of your horse and take your thumbs and press go into the mouth and press down on the bars and push back toward the first cheek teeth. On half the horses, you'll find a wave of fat that just flows over that first cheek tooth. Now, we affectionately call that flabby cheeks, and that's what I've always called it, and that's what I'm gonna call it. It has nothing to do with the cheeks, but I thought the word flabby cheeks would be something that everyone would remember. It's that important because in half the horses that do have flabby cheeks, it's really no big deal. But the other half, it becomes a big deal. So 25% of all the horses we see have flabby cheeks and they're affected to some degree. Now some of them are like, hey, hey, just be careful there. I want you to be careful. To you're not going to do my teeth unless you schnocker me with the best drugs you've got. And they will actually fight you. In fact, will hate you because you're going in there and you're pinching that fat up against the first cheek tooth. And when we get these horses that are sensitive in any degree with flabby cheeks, I often turn to the owner and say, uh, you have to ride this horse with light hands. And they say, oh my goodness, you have no idea. If you do anything more than just think about turning, these horse will object. They'll throw their head up in the air. They'll, they'll sulk back. That You have to have the lightest hands to ride this horse. And that's true. So there's three things we have to do when we have flabby cheeks. The first, the dentist takes care of because the first cheek tooth is pointed like the bow of the Titanic. And what most people do is they try and round that first bottom cheek tooth so it's round like the tugboat. A tugboat is a boat that doesn't have any round, sharp corners. It's nice and round so they can push the boats around. Well, by rounding this, when you put the space occupying mass in the horse's mouth, the what you call a bit, and it pushes that fat back up against that sharp pointed first cheek tooth, that horse is going to object. By giving it a place where it can escape, you actually help the horse. And the horse gets it, so as you put pressure on the bit, they now know that it's not gonna pinch them anymore. And, they, and it's like a brand new horse. I mean, the, like within minutes of going out there, the horse is so grateful. I can't you know, begin to tell you how many horses just are amazed. So round up the first cheek teeth. A lot of people call this the bit seat. And I get it, but most of the people who do a bit seat don't understand why they do it. And the reason they do it is because of these flabby cheeks, this excessive tissue that you need to give a break to. But I'll give you the other two things that you have to work on. Number two, get the thinnest diameter uh, bit that you can possibly find. Now I know there's an old wives tale out there that says thin bits are more uh, painful or more uh, severe. It's like a piece of wire in there, but that's not true. What causes a problem with thin bits is a rider's hands. So by reducing the mass of the bit, you're not going to be displacing as, as much of this t cheek tissue, and so it's not gonna pinch as much. So round the first cheek teeth and put a thin diameter bit in there. But number three is out of our control, and that's for you to learn how to ride with your seat and not with your hands. Get out of these horses' mouths. You don't need to be in them. They object to it, they don't like it. Get your hands out of there. And that's the best thing you can do. In fact, I find that riders with the best hands don't often find any improvement after we float the horse because the horse is going so well for them without the removal of the sharp points because they ride with their seat, not with their hands. But I'm not saying don't do the teeth because we all know that sharp teeth will prevent the horse from chewing properly, moving the tongue, and over time the horse actually becomes worse. But uh, I'll, help, I'll help you out. If you're about to buy a horse or you're training a horse and you're having problems with a bit, stick your thumb in, push it down on the bars, and push back. Make sure you don't get bitten because if you go too far back, they can bite your thumb and you will not like it. So be careful. Maybe you want to prop the mouth open on one side and just take one thumb in there and just feel that wave of fat that flows over the first cheek tooth. When you find it and you have a horse that's sensitive on the bit, you now have the reason for it. Make sure that the tooth behind that roll of fat is rounded off and smooth 
and make sure your bit is the smallest diameter, especially if you're using two bits, a double bridle. It's really critical that you get this first cheek tooth rounded up well so you don't have this uh, pinching occurring anymore. But that's really what Flabby Cheeks is all about. It's one of the most important uh, reasons why we float horses' teeth. It's also the most difficult thing we do on a one quarter of the horses that we see. So keep that in mind, all you trainers. Look for it, understand it, make sure your equine dentist is addressing it a nice, smooth, round, first lower cheek teeth. Thanks.